Hey guys! So, I have a very exciting news to tell you. I have been selected for a competition in Italy. I got the email yesterday evening, since this morning. I've been working on planning my work and planning the whole trip, which means the hotel, the flight, all of these boring details. I thought it would take me one hour, it took me all day and I still have a lot to do. So now I have like one week to plan everything. I don't want to let myself flow randomly, uh, but I want to plan how I will be mentally and work-wise. I want to live this experience with peace and with joy. I want to enjoy it. Then work-wise, I don't want to overdo to pretend I'm doing a lot, no. I want to work with strategy, especially that this week is very busy. I have one singing lesson in Antwerp and then two vocal coachings in Brussels. So I really have to find a balance with my energy between my personal practice and these coachings and lessons. Beside work, I really want to rest. Like, resting is a priority. Since I got sick and I had to do a vocal rest, I realized how sleep is crucial and how it helps you really to recharge your batteries and process what you've learned and for your muscles to recover as well. And then in my leisure time, I am gonna do only healthy stuff. I basically want to do activities that are good for me. So walks in the nature, maintaining my workout routine, yoga, these kind of things, you know? Anyway, now I'm gonna go on with booking and organizing. Ugh. And hopefully I will have enough energy afterwards to sing a bit. It was nice. After it, I took advantage of the city and I had a little walk and I bought Don Giovanni by Mozart because I'm always singing Zerlina and I don't have the Ortex version. So I was like, okay, Sarah, you're in the city center. There is a score shop. You just go and you buy it. And uh, we also talked a lot. Sometimes he's more my therapist than my vocal coach. <laughs> he asked me the question, what is your goal? Your expectations towards this competition? I wrote down my list on my laptop. So I'm going to read them for you. Well, actually, there are not so many. There is being in a whole new environment and being the person I want to be. And these two are linked, actually. So, being in a whole new environment. Uh, I've been studying for years in the same conservatory. When you grow in a certain environment, you start to be defined through this environment. I want to get free of this one because in the end it's very limitating. I feel like unconsciously I want to stick to that person, but I don't want to be this person. Every day I'm a new person, if I may say, you know. It's very important to see who am I? What, what identity do I project? Once you're aware of this, you can really shape it the way that is the most healthy for you. Now I want to be in a new environment where nobody knows me. 
no matter if I sing amazingly well or amazingly horrible, I'm gonna go and then I'm gonna go home. And then people will just be like, oh, this is the girl number 23 on the list of the participants. And then that's it. I can be totally free to be the Sarah that I want to be on that particular day for this particular performance. And that's luxury. Actually, I forgot to mention... Ah! Actually, I forgot to mention one goal. It is to train my performing skills because we had COVID for two years. So it was hard to have an opportunity to sing in front of people. And then if you're in a school again, at some point you're going to sing over and over again in front of the same people. So it's not going to be challenging anymore. But I think it's an amazing exercise to take a flight, sleep in a bed that is not yours, eat food that you're not used to, having your body who has to adapt to the altitude, to the quality of the air, the quality of the water. And within all these tiny challenges that we don't really realize, you have to put yourself in front of a room that you never sing in, with a pianist that you've never rehearsed with, that doesn't know you, you don't know him. Like this type of situation is very good to practice because you will only get them when you do competitions when you travel, when you are out of your comfort zone and when you have only a few minutes to defend yourself, to say, here, this is who I am today and this is what I can do today. Also about goals, what I want to say is that, to me, it doesn't make sense to set as a goal winning a competition. The reason is that you have a very tiny person of chances to get there even if you're top level, I mean, I'm not going to talk for myself. Like, I know I still have a lot to learn before making to the finals. But even if you're amazing, it's so subjective. And there are so many parameters in a competition. You cannot have control of it. So I really want to set goals that depend on me. Otherwise, I will be frustrated my whole life. And then the last thing that I want to mention is the mindsets. I really thought and made it clear what mindsets do I want. The mindsets that I want is to be looking forward to singing, to be looking forward to be in front of whoever is going to be sitting and listening to me, no matter if they want to or not. I don't care, but I'm really looking forward to putting makeup on, to be putting a beautiful dress, to, to sing in a nice hall, all these things. I really want to grow from this enthusiasm. finished my rehearsal. We did two run-throughs plus rehearsing. I am dead now. Like it was super nice and I feel like I really improved but I am just so tired now. It was so intense. So now I'm gonna go home, enjoy the beautiful sun, have a walk in the nature and I just feel really peaceful for the competition. I just need to be very focused calm and rest a lot. I will study all the things we've talked about today and then after this that will be it. I'm in Brussels guys. It looks beautiful really the houses and stuff.
a very important step of my preparation is the visualization. I really want to explore more and more the mental side of this preparation. That's why I also spend a lot of time imagining how it will be. I really want to focus on how I will feel, how I will be, my attitude, my mental state. So I want to visualize myself self-confident, just enjoying. And the mind is so strong that indeed it kind of make it happen. As much as when you have negative thoughts and you're like, oh my God, the others are much better than me, then you end up doing less than what you could. I also think it's important to visualize because if you don't visualize what you will do, you might get in shock because a competition, especially if it's the first time, like for me, it's not a familial environment. It's not something you see in your daily life, right? So if you don't prepare yourself mentally, you might have too much information to deal at once and too much stress. And I believe that if you anticipate them beforehand, when whatever happens, happens, you're ready to deal with them. Then the second way I visualize my competition is by visualizing the practical side. For instance, I Google the competition place to see how it looks like. How to go from my house to the airport. How to go from the airport to the hotel. How much time do I need to dress up and make up? How much do I need to warm up before the competition? I have to anticipate all these details. Because it removes a lot of stress, right? You don't have to worry then if there is a problem because everything is under control. So I check for myself what stresses me out. For instance, I'm a bit worried about how to reach the airport. So I really have to make clear how do I go in the easiest way possible. I really make sure that I plan everything down the last detail. So as soon as I step in the plane to fly to the competition, I am calm and already in the competition mode which means to have no worry and just think about the music. Mm -hmm.